What's up guys? So the Aphidius buff is finally live and now he's getting permanent 25% of defense ignore on his A2 and 50% if you have burn up on the enemy. This is kind of hard condition to fulfill in PvP because you probably, you know, you would need to get the burns before his turn and he can do the burn by himself on the A3 as well. But you know, if you have to take one turn on your squishy nuker before you can actually nuke, the fight is not gonna last long enough that you can get your second turn. Though his passive does scale a lot from the burns, he gets 3% decreased defense for each enemy when he places the burn, and then he gets 10% crit damage per burn on the enemy and 5% attack whenever a burn activates permanently up to 50%. Now this clearly sounds way better on Hydra because there you can actually make use of this and the battles last super long. In, in Arena the issue is that he's gonna get one-shotted right after his stone skin ends and there's not really too many ways to protect him. After that, I mean, some champions might easily kill him even through it. But he's gonna hit very hard and it's an AoE nook, so we'll see if we can get any kind of use out of him today. I still think that he's probably more meant to be for Hydra, even though in the update notes Arium was trying to make him a PvP champion and saying that he used to be a PvP champion and they want to make him even better there. Uh, he certainly never was used in PvP and we'll find out if anybody is gonna be brave enough to use him from now on. I would say that there's the obvious combination that if you can pair him with Gizmark, who puts the burns at the start of the battle before taking any turn, that would be the most convenient way placing the burns and at that point you would have a 50% defense ignore on the A2, meaning that you can go up to 100% if you get the Helm Smasher proc, and you would basically be one-shotting anybody through stone skin pretty well. Now I don't have Gizmark and we'll see if we can use his own burns or maybe we can get some burns up from my slow Sulfurion in some battles. I think that's gonna be harder said than done knowing that I'm very slow, but here's the build that we're running on him. Now there's some couple glaring issues, like the normal items look fairly good or good, but I am running HP ring because, you know, we definitely want to get the stone skin up. He's a normal attack nuker without any kind of survivability passive on his kit, and he's gonna get one shot by anything. You literally need to run stone skin accessory 7 if it means running wrong main stats and that's what we're doing. We're also running accuracy banner which further cuts down on his damage but it's super important to get those burns up and we'll see if this works or not. We have like 329 accuracy, 249 speed, 280 crit damage and 6.1k attack so it doesn't look as impressive as I'm used to, but we're kind of um, having to sacrifice a lot for the accuracy, speed and stone skin. There's a lot more conditions here than Nugras usually have and we're not just purely focusing on damage. But let's do some battles and see how it goes. Oh yeah, here's what Master is I'm running on him. I'm not fully finished and I don't generally like to go on the super tree on nukers because you do get a lot of from the defense tree, not only very high damage mitigation with improved parry, but you also get turn meter from cycle of revenge and counter attacks from retribution and deterrence. Generally I wouldn't miss out on those, but he relies so heavily on the burns and it was kind of hard enough to get this much accuracy, so we did go for the super tree, but he's gonna get one-shotted by 
anything anyway, so unless he's in the stone skin or we have necro protection and enemies running a new guard that can't get past it, it doesn't really matter how tanky he is, so we're gonna run with this and see how it goes. Now, I'm probably gonna force him in some battles today. Normally, you know, I don't really try to... Um, I try to win every battle, even though that doesn't happen in practice. B but in this video we're gonna give him a go, so I'm probably gonna use him in some battles where I shouldn't. I wish I had Gizmark, not just because Gizmark is super good, but this would be super interesting to try in combination with Gizmark rather than without him, because I think that would be the true test, like can the top top mega whales can they use him in practice? I'm think I think they probably can in a speed team, but Let's find out if I can use him in practice or not. Now I do have Necrot, so that might be kind of one of the better ways to sustain him. But Necrot isn't as OP as he used to be, let's put it that way. People hardly ever use Necrot against me. I, I don't even remember the last time somebody picked Necrot, outside of me of course, but... Okay, so early Wukong pick, it could be a support or a nuker. K kind of an odd pick, honestly. With, like, with Maritska, not like uh, Mikage and then Wukong. I'm probably still gonna assume it's a nuker, though. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess we'll just go with the Anchor on. No, just, he might weak it on Angora, and since he only does damage with the A2, it can actually kind of stall a lot and be super annoying for the Wukong team in practice. Okay, Alas with 6 star, Blessing and plus 2. This guy is level 92, holy moly. There's so many, you know, new players in this game with, you know, kind of stacked accounts. I, I was looking at them. Now that you can see the profiles, what level people are and what achievements they have and how long they played, it's kind of interesting to be able to see it now. Should we just go a video? I feel like this guy's team is not gonna be that fast. I could almost go with um, Sulfurion in this battle. My Sulfurion is not fast, he's only gonna be like 300 speed. so. I'm not really very comfortable picking him against most teams, but this guy doesn't seem to go on a speed team at all, so maybe my Yeah, okay, maybe my Sulfurion could be faster than his team. Of course we're gonna ban Sifi since she does do the immunity. And I'm sure that his Sifi is faster than 300 speed. But outside of that, even if Sulfurion doesn't go first, as long as we don't get one shot through stone skin and Wukong could of course polymorph us. We should be able to at least get the burns up and maybe do an Ulk on Aphidus. Okay, Sulfurion went first. How much polymorph does he have? Two champions, but both of them R6 star blessing. Yeah, I don't know if that was so good idea against the against the marriage guitar. God damn, I, I don't use parents very often, so I'm not super used to this. We, we obviously can't look right now. Should we just go for the second burn? Yeah, let's go for the burn on the Alphidius, but now he's gonna die before he gets a turn himself. Oh, that, that was enough damage to kill the Odin. I mean, I wasn't expecting that, but we did, like, 
explode the burns and I also did a normal hit so I guess that was enough damage but there's no way he can survive now. Okay, I actually took a hit on Wukong but Wukong AoE hits horribly so... And now, now he has a second, second block damage like from the Marit's passive and the Alas passive. This is kind of unfortunate because we're not able to test them. Um, nuke at all. Like we could totally one shot the team if we could just take a turn here. But th that's the issue with the uh, nukers in this meta. That okay, actually, we okay, we can at least kill the Maritska. Let's see how much we hit on her. We're gonna do self attack pass, so this should be a decent hit, but. The burns are not up anymore, so it's only gonna be 25% ignore. 124k, that's decent, but Maritska also didn't have any buffs on her, so it's not that that amazing, but it's it's good enough for the AoE. Like if that was the baseline, it would be really good, but <laughs> we'll see about that. Um Okay, if I want to win this battle, I don't know if I should revive the Sulfurion or the... Or the Taras. Let's... Okay, let's go for the Sulfurion revive. No, no, he can kill it with Odin. Okay, that, that was a mistake. Yeah, okay. I, I screwed that one up. <laughs> for the content, yeah. I, I forgot about that. I instantly knew when I did it that Odin can kill it. Okay, that didn't go too well. It was kind of annoying to deal with the two block damage uh, buffs in row, but there's a reason why those champions are top tier. A little bit, you know, obviously frustrating because there's so massive difference between the mythicals, but as I was saying that in this meta you basically need to have some kind of unkillable mechanics on your nuker to be top tier, since there is many good ones that actually do. And just because Aphidius does have ignore defense, but he doesn't have like you know unkillable pass passive like Siegfried. That's not quite good enough for PvP, I don't think, in practice. I mean, the only um, situation where I think he might actually become meta or very popular in PvP, maybe very popular is not the right way to put it, but I think the niche is that you could maybe use him in speed teams. And I think probably some whales might be using Aphidos sometimes when you can pair that, like, by going first and being able to lock out the enemy or getting the burns up and so on. Probably in those situations he would actually be kind of good, but I think it's gonna be hard to like make the most out of him in a go second team like I'm gonna be trying to do today. I don't know if I should go with Ankara or should I just go with Mord against the Mikage? Let's go with Mord. But maybe it will go bet better than I thought if we can just find a time where he can actually do a nuke. In that battle we were kind of destroyed by the Mariska passive and the Alas block damage and we had to make wait many turns before we could do anything, so it was kind of frustrating. And there's so many people that pulled Aphidus as their first mythic champion and feel super bad about it, so we need to at least give him a fair shake and see if we can do something. Maybe maybe it's better to go with Necret instead of Sulfurion like I did in last battle. Because even though Sulfurion did offer the bands, but 
it was kind of too hard to pull that in practice since we couldn't even survive. Maybe we can do it with Necron. The one good thing about Aphidus is that he also does do the self attack buff, so we don't need to pair him with another champion that does it. Like here, maybe we could take like maybe one hit from Lazarus if I ban the Taras. Maybe I should go with Necret and Aphidus. Yeah, let's give it a go at least. Aphidius is gonna do AoE damage, so the R base is not gonna be that tough. Like, he's obviously picking the R base because he knows that I'm a Rotos main and I pick him in every battle. People do, again, do this against me all the time. But R base does do also the immunity buff, and we can get the burns if she does it, so. That might be annoying. Okay, he went with triple nuke air, which is kind of a privilege that you can only do if you have the top mythic nukers like Lazario, Siegfund and Nice, because all of them do re revise as well, and very strong ones. Like, they literally do better revives than actual revivers. <sighs> Going for the Taras ban, I don't think he's gonna save us because Siegfried can definitely one shot us, but let's give it a go. I hope this doesn't turn out into a live arena session where I'm donating points to everybody because I want to try out our videos, but we're gonna do it. I mean, if it, if it goes horribly wrong today, I'm not gonna do it next time, but this video, we're gonna give it a go. This guy has full mythic team, by the way. Only mythics plus Taras, so that's a little bit scary. And obviously, you know, I don't have Sifi, so even though I feel like Mikake kind of sucks when I use it, but it doesn't suck as much as when the other people use it and they go first and I don't have immunity. We do have the mod passive, though, so that's the one way that I... I try to deal with this, but having a Sifi go first would obviously be way better. Okay, that stun literally did not do a lot on us. I, I guess it reduced the turn meter a little bit, but nobody should get stunned unless he one shots the more before she takes a turn, but surely we can take one turn. L losing the stone skin sucks though, but that's not the stun. Okay. Okay, this went horribly wrong. More. Mord is gonna die before she gets a turn, okay. I think we're starting out this video with a... <laughs> with a bitter taste and maybe that's... A oh wait! He didn't go for the nuke, why didn't he go for the nuke? Mm, I'll take it. Oh yeah, we're still locked out, fuck. If we weren't, we could instantly kill the Lazarus. I don't know if I can kill it with the A1, it's gonna be very close. Okay, we could kill it. I think it pretty much had that exact HP or something close to it. 52 case. 
right about what you would have normally on a nuke, Lazarius. Oh? No, yeah, we, we can't do it. I mean... Can we get a turn here? Okay, we, we got the turn. Wait. Is that good enough? I'm so low HP that I think that he can just kill me with the supports. Yeah. Okay, if we want to stall this, I don't think he can kill me either, but I don't think I have time to stall it on video. The Necrot is in Bolster and Immortal. Well, okay, he does have a lot of turn. Well, he's gonna get Polymorph too. I, I kind of want to see this. Can he actually kill us? Okay, we broke Polymorph, but we didn't have enough accuracy to Polymorph. Okay, I guess he can kill us. <laughs> We're literally not taking any turns with the turn meter reduction here. That's kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah, okay, two out of two battles. Aphidius did nothing, so this is not maybe the best start on the video. And to be clear, I mean... We kind of got unlucky there, like both Aphidius and um, Maud were in stone skin and maybe we could have gotten lucky and gotten the polymorph or just won the 50-50 dice roll and not not had the stone skin removed. I think we would have won the battle if, if he didn't won, you know, like many dice rolls in a row or coin tosses, but even if we did win it, I don't know if it if it would have been that that strongly enabled by Aphidius, probably some other nuker would have done the job too, but we move on, let's give him a few more battles. Maybe I can find a battle where I can go with Heligat and Aphidius. I'm handing out my hard-earned points today, but it's not its not that picky, so we can just get them back some other time. It sucks to lose, but the points themselves mean nothing. And, but, you know, I think the main part where he is going to be kind of cute now is going to be Hydra. I'll definitely try him in Hydra next week. Need to wait until the reset to put him in my best team. But I would be kind of, you know, curious to see somebody who is fast and they have Gizmog. Can they, can they use... Aphidius properly, because I feel like in very specific settings he, mi he might still be relevant even in top live arena. But it's clearly kind of hard for me to use him today. Like here he has the two buff troopers and polymorph, and we're gonna go second. And we're against Harim anyway, so I don't know if I really should go with him. Yeah, we're, we're back to the old old trusty methods. I mean, picking Rodos against Harima is horrible, but probably it's still better decision than picking Aphidus. I don't want to roast him on a video where I'm trying to use him, but based on the start, I, it's not going too well. I don't know if I want to go for the Mario span or Harima, but let's go with Harima. Oh, he didn't ban the UDK. I mean, I was kind of expecting that, but maybe he could have done it since he has the Mikage and Shu Chen. He definitely would go before my Armands, but now the Wukong is not super threatening 
for a while. Unless he, I guess, wins the dice roll again or the coin toss and removes the stone skin. I guess in the last battle, the Mika can remo remove the stone skin from everybody, so okay. Didn't happen this time, good. He broke the Soul Reaper, but it wasn't wasn't enough. Okay. We're kind of off to like very bad start. The issue here is that he has the He stole the stone skin on the Wukong. Otherwise maybe it would have been doable, but okay. Another loss it is, I guess. He had multiple bus trippers, so even if Mikake didn't remove the stone skin, but Wukong stealing it was even worse, and once again nobody got polymorphed, so sucks to suck. That's why I keep using the Duchess, even though she doesn't do a lot in the current meta, but she does have the 6 star polymorph, and it is kind of needed in practice. I mean, I only have one champion here with 6 star polymorph and then we do have more with 2 star but would have been the best obviously to have everybody in it and I think if I had everybody in 6 star polymorph it would be kind of hard for this guy to win basically you know almost regardless what kind of team I'm running but especially if it's with UDK against the Wukong but we still lost so sucks to suck. I'm still waiting for the 6 star blessing to appear in the split solo shop. I have enough now to get the Narsus. And I did get the 6 star Narsus maybe like 2 weeks ago, but I just didn't have enough resources to buy it. Also on another note, we're super close to Marius. I think after today I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe spend the last of my gems and do the Iron Twins twice. Maybe we can get it today, but I think I will definitely get it on a Sunday at least, surely. But I might literally get it today, so we'll see about that. Though, I don't know if I can make a video tomorrow, because I have I have some visitors again on weekend, but maybe on Sunday. Okay, moving on, let's do a record today how many points we can lose on one video, but we're start, starting out strong at least. And, like, we didn't even meet, meet any super... Uh, I guess there was the guy with full mythic team, but... We didn't even meet the top accounts yet. We were meeting accounts that were on the border of goal 4. With even lower points than me. So it's only gonna get worse. And... It's not looking good right now. I want to get at least one battle where I get to use the nook because if we have the burns and we get to use the nook, we can definitely kill things. It's just the conditions are so hard to fulfill. On the other hand, if you pull some, something like nice, you literally are guaranteed to get a turn in every battle. Because if you kill him, he's gonna switch the form and not die and get a turn. Like, the difference between that and not having any kind of survivability passive is like, you can't even compare those two. But obviously, some people are fast, you can always go first. And they can pull off George it and... I'm sure they could do Aphidus as well if, you know, they don't need to be tanky. Like maybe this guy with Sifi and Arbiter. Uh, what do we... I guess, yeah, I, I guess we're just... I kind of do like to run the Rotos against B teams more than Narthus, but I don't know if I want to early pick it. He could totally go with Harima. Now let's 
Let's go with early Rotos pick here. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, should I just go with both Rotos and... And Norris? Let's, let's go with that. He can go with UDK, of course, but he's not gonna have any lockout or anything like that. So he's not super, you know... He doesn't fit his team that much to go with UDK at this point. Okay, now he kind of switched it up. <laughs> we got Harima and Wukong and it's not a speed team anymore. And probably he's gonna pick UDK now, but we're just gonna ban it, I guess. It's still not gonna be that tanky. And should I pick the UDK against the Wukong? Alternatively, we could try to ban the Sifi and go with the Aphidus <laughs> again. But do I do I want to do that? I'm almost tempted to do it, but he does have the Harima passive. Now I, I think we we might skip that in this battle and go with Galleos or should I just go with Yeah, with Angor and UDK. That way we might cut in. Okay, Knee Shark will ban that. I think we're good though. I think we can win this battle. Now that I didn't pick Aphidos, we might, might get the win. But yeah, honestly, it does seem that the rooster is kind of more practical than Aphidos, which might seem kind of hard in PvP, because the rooster... Rooster doesn't need any setup from other people to pull him off. And he's kind of uh, a lot better matchup against Harima than Aphidos. Again, the Wukong, of course, had to steal the stone skin, like in every battle today, but considering that Rotos can get a turn... Oh, nice. We Okay, we got lucky. We actually removed the stone skin, but considering that Harima is polymorphed anyway, we're good. Rotos can get into town. You know, maybe, maybe Aphidos could do this kind of damage that Rotos is doing with the A3, but we're just never getting the opportunity to use it today, so... Okay, I think we had three losses in a row, and now we had the win, <laughs> because we didn't pick Aphidos. I, I guess that's... that's part of the reason. Need to get at least one Aphidos win. I want to get one Aphidos win. Come on. Surely somebody is gonna pick a team where I could pull it off. Like, if this guy goes with Harima and not Wukong, that could work. Like, Harima and then one other nuker. Not Wukong, some kind of old school nuker that can be... Can be cocked by Necret. In, in that situation, we could maybe do it. Okay, I think we're just gonna... Go all in with the Rotos and... Maybe he's expecting the Narsus again, and we could, we could pull off Aphidos, come on. Okay, he got the Angora, exactly, yeah. Because he's afraid of the Narsus. We could basically ban the last Nuker at this point, so we can pull off the Aphidos. This is nowhere, you know, the perfect battle to pick him. But at least he's gonna get the turn here, and... Not gonna get one shot, I feel like. M okay, m maybe it's gonna be another loss, just trying him out. He does get the immunity from Sifi, and he does have the Harima passive, so this is not ideal at all, but let's give it a go. What? He's letting me have the Armands again. I don't know why he's not 
scared about Armands at all, but Armands is literally the most scariest champion in the game if you can get a turn. And normally, normally nobody ever lets anybody have it, and if they do, they have like two lockout champions that are faster than the Armands, but this guy doesn't have any lockout or buff strip or anything like that. He, this is kind of weird. He he's kind of giving me a layup and you know trying to <laughs> trying to help me get some buffy do snooks on video. Now we can even get the burn up first. Should we go for it? Well, we're just gonna kill his team with throttles before we get to that anyway. <laughs> Damn. E even, even that one wasn't the good. Good showcase for Aphidus, because if we got to that point, Rodos was just gonna demolish his team by himself anyway. <laughs> I don't think this video is gonna give a lot of hope for those sorry people who pulled Aphidus instead of Nice or Lazarius, Siegfried, Komidos. I mean, there's multiple other good things to pull other than just Nice, and the thing is that there's quite many of them, so if you happen to get the bad ones, it's definitely gonna hurt. I guess this video is not gonna help me to cope with my Aphidus pull either. When we saw the buff, I was instantly feeling good about it before I even read it, and I was instantly, instantly kind of disappointed that there was no survivability in the kit and it wasn't like a massive rework like they did on Siegfront. But you can't you can't win every time, I guess. But yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do then because I'm probably not gonna use Aphidus in live arena. I guess I'll go back to Candy as my main attack nuker then. I mean, he doesn't need setup and he can do okay damage. He's even kind of a little bit tankier because of his passive. He gets the well, which gives damage mitigation by itself, but he also gets 40% damage reduction under well. So compared to Aphidus, Candy is actually very tanky nuker. I think in this battle we might go with the rooster. We might even go with... Yeah, we, we, we're probably gonna go with the rooster, not Aphidus. The issue with Aphidus too is that the second form doesn't do anything in PvP. I don't think it really does anything in high tide either, but especially in PvP it doesn't do anything. And um, the, the one one of the top selling points about Muticals is that you can switch to the second form and not be locked out, but he can't do it. But Kaleos can, so we might actually use Kaleos in this battle. I, I know he picked three supports, but he has a speed team with Sifi, and I did want to get UDK in this battle because of that. I kind of thought about picking Necrit for a second, but now let's go with UDK. Oh, okay. Damn. I do have one piece of reaction on Gallows. The Mesomel can ignore the stone skin and it's definitely gonna one-shot the Gallows, but maybe we can proc it. I mean, he has like triple lockout in this team. By the way, in his team he could probably pull out the Aphidos, it might work in what he's running, but he's going with like a heavily go first, like a tank, tank team counter speed team. This is not gonna be a great matchup. But may maybe I get lucky and I proc the reaction on Galleos. Oh, and he even ba banned Rotos, but we still have 
have do no girl, so maybe we can do something. So sometimes you just need to go full YOLO against the speed teams and we're getting locked out anyway so it's not like I can stall it that much with revivers. Okay we did proc the reaction on Galleos, he probably wasn't expecting that <laughs> but we have both stone skin and reaction but we do though we're running um, attack ring on Galleos because we don't have defense one so it's kind of scuffed but I guess it was useful in this situation. Now we can't do the decreased defense no since everybody has immunity but maybe we probably we can't kill anybody but yeah I mean we I don't think we can kill anybody but we do get the increased damage per buff but the defense buff kind of um, Counterist. Okay, we actually had enough damage to kill Yumeko, but not Lazarus. I think we need to go for a, both the Sifi and Lazarus are gonna revive here, so I think we need to go for a Lazarus kill. At least the Sifi revive goes on cooldown and he needs to decide which one. Okay, UDK is out of the game, but that doesn't really matter. I don't know if we can survive long long enough to get cooldowns back on Narthus. He has a squeezy team, so if we can get turns, he can definitely kill people, but yeah, I, I think we're done. Damn, the Mesomel is just spamming, spamming the block revive. Isn't that on the A2? And the A2 has a cooldown. Did I forget something about Mesomel's kit? Was he getting like incredibly lucky and just resetting it with um, Masteries or Refresh proc or something? Do you think that Mesomel used the A2 like five times in this battle? Okay, now I'm getting a little bit confused, but... Yeah, th there's no cooldown reset on his abilities. I guess he did the A3 to rotate it back, but I think he was getting just mastery and refresh procs or something. He was getting in insanely lucky. Oh yeah, I guess there was the Yumeko lockout too. Maybe that gave it back once, but I think he did it like five times in like six turns on Mesomel or something stupid like that. Okay, so the record today is four losses and two wins and I think both of those two wins were against the same guy with Rodos so not not the best video maybe probably not even the worst one to be fair I mean I've had my fair share of getting owned but I guess I guess I need to give up on the Aphidus I wanted to use him but I guess it's super hard in practice I think we're gonna use him if we get a good opportunity, but we're gonna try to recuperate the wins and not force him. Now, I didn't even use him in the last battle and we lost, but I'm. we're not gonna take any, any more unnecessary losses that we have to, since we're already doing terrible, but I'm getting uh, Marius in a couple days, so we know that Marius is gonna be good.
and the Narciss Blessing. Dude, I can't wait to get 6 star Blessing on Narciss. It's actually so big deal because, as you can see, I like to open with Narciss and Angora. I think for my crappy account, it's probably the best, you know, first two picks when I don't know what the enemy team is gonna go with. But since neither one of them have 6 star Blessing and Polymorph, it's a big issue. And I end up often not having like very little polymorph and they even ban my polymorph champions. If I could have a six star polymorph on both of these, it would like I'm sure it would like increase my win rate in like double digits. Like I think it would make a massive, massive difference. But this matchup doesn't look that bad. Now we're back to the usual strategies and not going for the Aphidus memes for the video. Dude, I still wanna get the one Aphidus win. We need to find one battle where where we can get a big Aphidus nuke. We didn't even see the nuke yet. I, I wanna see the nuke with burns up. I already know that my Aphidus is gonna do like 200k damage with the burns up and that is kind of substantial but I want to see it in practice. If he if he thinks if he takes his time to think and he's still picking Harima, then I'm gonna laugh. But I feel like he's thinking a lot, but he's still gonna pick Harima anyway. Surely you have it, right? Okay, no. Okay, okay, so okay. He had to actually think there. This is a battle that I'm c comfortable with. I mean, the Mikagi is gonna be a bit annoying. Maybe we could have gone with Mord instead of Duchess. But I think we're gonna be tanky enough that it's not gonna be Isu. I, I wanted to get the Duchess passive against Garol. But yeah, let, let's see. I mean, he doesn't have Harima, so see if he's gonna explode if I can get a turn on Rotos. And he doesn't have the type of nukers that will instantly one shot my Rotos, so I think we're good. Yeah, dude, that 124k damage. It was with attack buff. We didn't even proc the helm smasher here. It would have been more than 200k with the proc. So that that's what happens when we don't meet, meet Harim or Lockout. We can easily one-shot any revivers. Well, unless there's somebody crazy enough to build a reviver at full HP. But nobody does that except some... Some special cases, but basically nobody. You're not gonna run into 160k HP Duchesses very often, because, you know, people that can pull that off can can do something a lot better than that, usually. I don't think I've ever, ever met a Duchess that's 160k health. Or really, like, outside of that, like, I don't really meet any, like, Angora, Duchess, you name Reviver. I don't think I meet really any of them that are built super tanky, like let's say 140k plus HP. Those are very rare, <laughs> even though all of my Revivers are like that, but I don't really meet any of those. But yeah, the other fights didn't seem very competitive, where I got demolished, and this one doesn't seem like that either, but for once it's for my side. Dude, if there was just like some champion that could, could protect Rodos and get rid of like our base UDK and Harma, 
somehow counter those champions that I could pair with Rodos, I would be so happy about that. Rodos is so good, I really like Rodos, it's just he's countered so easily. But if he if he's not, then he's on the level of, of the top champions. And this is, you know, while Rodos is the most nerfed champion and he has gotten five different patches that nerfed him. And I don't even have Sifi, you know. Sifi is meant to be played with Rodos and then you can't even get CC'd and we're, we don't even have that utility. I'm kind of getting it from more than Angora and Duchess, but in a scuffed way, it would obviously be way better with City. Like, we're already doing kind of good against Taras teams with Rodos, but if we had Sifi and we meet teams with both Taras and Maritska, not only are they not like big issue, but they're actually, we would be countering them at that point because Rodos can just spam attacks on Maritska and lose 50% of his health and then he get extra turn. And since we're gonna obviously steal some health from kills and damage, we can basically do like 3 attacks on Maritska and get 3 free extra turns before we run out of health. Or I mean, yeah. And it's gonna take 1 or 2 turns to kill Maritska. And if you can if you can get your like let's say that we're locked out and then we do like the a2 uh the a1 and then we get the a3 back from the uh from from the mastery proc then we do the a3 and we get two turns and Rodos is still alive and we win the battle at that point people used to abuse that in classic arena offense during the Taras and Maritska meta and I never really got to taste it properly myself I mean I've not done that on takeovers and other people's accounts but I wish I could have done it back then I, I guess you always wish for things to play differently but it would have been super fun to play with Rotos and Sifi during that meta I, I guess on all of the other metas too I mean the combination has always been powerful. Let's see, maybe this guy drafts a team where we can use Aphidos. We're not gonna have like two burn champions probably, but I mean, I guess I could still go with the Sulfurion, but he's in 6p Storm skin, not insanely tanky. I don't really like my chances with that. But maybe we could go with Sulfurion and. Okay. <laughs> There's no way. Not against Marius. Okay, let me think about this for a second. No, no. I, we, we need to have some kind of. What do I do here? I guess we'll go with the mode for boss trip and then what? I think we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna lose because of the fact that I don't have two nukers here. I don't think Gallows is going to do it, but I think Gallows is the best that we can do here. In this battle it will be super useful to have a nuke Wukong.
Okay, he doesn't have a lockout though, so it's maybe not as bad as I thought it would be. I could go for Nar Narsus Band 2 instead of the Helicat. Let's go for the Narsus Band. I mean, we have both Rotals and Armands. He can only ban one of them. And either one of them we get, we're gonna be able to counter the Helicat in some way. I mean, we do have the Mort too, so Mort can Bush ship, he's gonna get the defense buff up, but we can do that too. But Rodos can also kill through the block damage. But yeah, ironically, we ended up picking Galleos instead of Aphidus, even in this battle. And Galleos does do buff strip too, but he attacks before the buff strip, so it wouldn't really fully counter the Helicat. I can only kill one of the nukers, but I think we're gonna go for the Helicat kill first, actually. And not uh, Marius. Did I open with the A2 here? I mean, we're gonna get attack if I switch the form. Or should I actually do the defense buff? Let's open with the defense buff. Yeah. We do have the more passive, so we are not completely destroyed by Enfeeble. I'll do that on the next turn, though. Wait. Oh, fuck. I thought he already went before me. He did? Wait, he didn't do the buff strip. Okay, I'm... A little bit confused. Didn't he have the buff strip or not? Okay, I guess it worked out fine. Wait, what? Oh yeah, he got the Angkor revive. That makes sense, but it's not... It's not the uh, end of the world. I kind of forgot about that for a second, but... That's why we did the... Um, boss in the first place. Oh fuck, wait, we got Polymorph but he didn't have enough accuracy, I guess, to land it. Come on, just let my Rotos have like one turn here and... Oh fuck, and he got the whale up on the Marius. Fuck. I, did we lose? I think we lost. Yeah, I, I can't kill, kill it now. Fuck. I don't think there's anything we can do here. Yeah, we'll, we can survive another Mario say one, surely not. Oh, he's yeah, he's even getting ten. A2. Okay. <sighs> I don't know what I should have done there, like, apart from, like, having another Nuker instead of Kalleos. But, hmm. I guess I should have just. I think the Ankara had Stone Skin at the start when I got the Rodos first, and. I don't know what I could have done. 
May maybe it would have been better to kill Marius first in instead of Helgelt, but... Yeah. Or I, I could have just picked Necrot in that battle instead of UDK, but I kind of have to preemptively pick the UDK. Okay, Marius and Angora. I either mod or Jatsus and Necrot. Uh, yeah, let's go with mod. Shark. okay. Thank God that I went with uh, Necrot, but it's still it's still not good enough. We have both the revivers in the stone skin, so we need polymorph proc or we lose basically. Wait, should I go with No, I can't even go with Helicat here. He has the Marius and uh, Angora and <laughs> Grixia. Yeah. Everybody screws with the Heligat. Oh, maybe I should have used the HP Aura. I'm not even sure if it... It kind of depends. More this the fastest one. Oh oh okay this okay we're, we're good we're good we're good yeah never mind no okay goddamn creeks yeah I think we might still be good though Mode is gonna go first or not I I guess Nars has got a lot of procs from the Mastery. Okay, we're good, we're good. Only one bomb on Necret and Ankara, so... I mean, we, we still need to pull off a revive. Oh, oh. Mm. We can't claim those, but can we survive with the... Uh, shield? Like, we're only taking A1 from... No, never mind. <laughs> We're not taking A1 from Marius. Krixia to OP. Does the Arbiter have Polymorph? Nobody has Polymorph in his team. I guess he's going all in on speed team. You, I mean, you always want to have temporal chains and intimidating presence. He happens to have two champions with uh, intimidating presence, but I guess He's basically going for a full speed team. But can we survive long enough to actually pull off a revive against this guy? Okay, instantly. But we're gonna we're gonna get the counter attack. Oh, oh, that went out perfectly. We we got the NV pull on us, but more happened to cut in before that. But is my Narsus gonna go be before Marius? That's the question. If we do, I think we're good. Ah, fuck. He got the... Um, I always forget what that master is called. The support tree master evil eye. He, he got the evil eye mastery from support tree and reduced our 10 meter. And now Marius doesn't have three buffs, so we actually can't 
block revive it. Uh, but we should, yeah, we should still go for the A3 though. Since we do have Ankara in the same team and we get the passive. Okay, surely we can't lose at this point. Should I do the heal or revive? Let's do the heal. Okay. Barely won that battle. But I, I guess we're we are making a little bit comeback from the horrible start when I was forcing the Aphidos in every battle. If we get couple wait, how much do we even have time left? If we get couple wins at the 20 minutes. Yeah, if we get like two more wins, maybe we are like 50-50 or one more win than loss. I'm thinking some combination of Wukong, Mord or Necret and then pick the Nougar as the last one. Yeah, let's just go with Wukong and Mord. He got the Arman, so if I just go with Angor as a reviver, he can just ban the only one and he probably would do it. We don't have that kind of hard CC anyway, so we need some revivers. Maybe we can... Okay, interesting. I was just gonna say that maybe we can... If he bans the... If he picks the UDK so that I can't go with Rodos. He doesn't have any buff troopers. I mean, we could go with Helicat. Helga is not going to do that much damage, but he only has one reviver, and we have the Wugong for buff strip, so Helga should have enough damage to heal this team. It's kind of ironic that the good old Helga is going to be more useful on on the video than Aphidus, but it is what it is. You're getting the gold heart tooled here. We're not doing fake news. I did give him a go and we were actually trying to use him and losing many battles because of it, but we can't make it work. I would say that it would be a little bit interesting if somebody like Biohack, who is 460 plus speed, if somebody like that tried him in speed teams only, it might be a little bit better than how it's playing out for me, but I would like to see it in practice first. It's kind of hard to say if it, if it would actually be better than some other options. So the mod A2 does increase the duration of ally buffs by one turn. It doesn't apply of course to the block damage, but who does he have with Polymorph? We're gonna hit the UDK anyway, but... Um, yeah, it's not gonna increase the block damage duration, but it would increase the duration of the defense buff in a second, so maybe we'll save it for that. Also, we now we have the Angora Heligat combination that the one guy had against us a couple of battles ago, so maybe we can be super annoying as well. And we're denying him of the defense buff. And that's if he doesn't seem to be in protection set. So he's basically not gonna get the defense buff in this battle. And we're slowly dwindling their defense a little bit with the cruelty from Helicat, but it's too stark cruelty, so it's a lot worse than it could be. But it's actually a very good mastery. It's a, it's literally the best mastery for damage, but it kind of goes under the radar because Polymorph is so OP and the battles are fast and you don't really get to make most out of it in PvP.
I think we should actually do the strength now and then we're hopefully gonna increase the duration on, on the next turn. Or, or just a shield. We have both a defense buff and shield, so it's kind of good. If he had two revivers, we couldn't kill this with Helicat, but with just one reviver, even if he has UDK taking a lot of the hits, I think we can do it. My Helica doesn't really have the best gear on him because I stole a lot of it for... I think both Aphidus and Garleo stole some Helica gear pieces, so he's not as pimped out as he used to be. Probably I should get him to at least 4 star blessing over time and I'll probably try to try to put the good gear back on him. Look, looks like with the combination of more than Ankara, we're pretty much having a full uptime on defense buff, so there is that at least. The Sifi does have Polymorph and we could proc the weekend and get Polymorphed on Heligath, but he doesn't really have um, any accuracy, so unlikely that it, it would actually happen. Damn, Harimo resisted the Wukong. We, ba we basically can't kill the Harima until everybody else is dead, because Helicat can't crit on her, but um, yeah, as, as long as we can kill the Sifi eventually, we can do it. But yeah, let's see if we can kill the Sifi. Our damage is ramping up our time, but so is the damage of Nace, Nice and Helicat. Nace. So is the damage of Nice and Helicat. I was trying to put out like American pronunciation, but I think Nace just sounds weird. Okay. Wukong is, Wukong is gone, but can we close in the battle before it's too late? Does Sivi even have revive yet? She might not. Yeah, she might not even have it yet. Come on, you can do it, Helicat. Ah, oh, fuck. I think she does have the revive now. <laughs> fuck. Ah, uh, and we one turn until the AoE nook. Fuck. Did we? Did we miss our um? our chance there. The Sifi is gonna heal up a little bit now. Oh, okay, fuck. Wait, he died? But we... Yeah, okay. We can revive him, of course, but now Sifi is getting healed. Not, not looking good. Okay, fuck. We lost it in the end, god damn it. Okay, I thought we could do it, but if I had the better gear on, we could have 100% sure killed him. But let me show you. I have stolen so many of the top pieces on Helic that his gear is kind of crappy. But it was so close 
100% guaranteed we could have killed him if he, if he was in the old gear. Like, we don't have crit damage or weapon. Amulet doesn't have um, defense. I mean, the helmet doesn't have defense. The um, chest doesn't have ascension or, or crit damage. Boots are five star, you know. We are kind of going the bottom of the barrel here. And of, of course, we don't have, you know, the four star blessing, which would add a lot more damage. But Sifi was like almost dead. So I guarantee you that with the old gear, even without the four star blessing, we would have for sure killed that guy. And I probably should should focus on getting the four star blessing on Helicat because even though I don't use him in every single battle like I used to back in the day when he wasn't countered as bad by the meta, but I do use Helicat regularly. Like he's one of the few champions that hasn't gone out of use even though I use him a lot less so I definitely need to get the best best form out of him that I can because that's not the first battle that I have where Helicat is my only nuker and the battle basically falls down if I have enough damage to kill the Sifi with Helicat or not I mean every time it's Sifi because Sifi is picked by you know enemies at I don't know, 95% of uh, battles. Sometimes if they go full mythicals, we might have a weird battle where they don't pick Sifi. But practically 100% of battles, my enemy team picks Sifi. Sifi nurse when, I mean, she has like everything. I, I feel like we could totally, totally get a Sifi nerf. If you compare her to like any other revivers, it's not even close and she's like a thousand times better than the competition. So I feel like it would be totally fair to do a pretty sub substantive nerf to her. I think she's been nerfed once, but it was years ago and it wasn't a big one. He picked three support, so maybe we'll go with Wukong and Rotos. Okay, Kidney Shark, Duchess or Necrot. Let's go with... He doesn't have lockout, so let's go with Tatsus. Is he gonna ban it though? He's not sure what to ban. I think, yeah, I think he's... What? Rodos ban? I thought he was thinking between Wukong and Tatsus, but he actually went for the... Rotospan? <sighs> My Rotos is in stone skin, so he would get one shot anyway. Darts and Narses are not, so those are the two champions I really didn't want to get banned. Would have been better to first pick Maud in this battle and not go with Angkor at all, but this is better than nothing. Oh no, wait. Oh, I totally forgot about it. Th that was kind of unintentional big brain play, but I totally forgot that Duchess is also strong affinity against uh, Gnishak. I guess that seal the deal. We, we can't lose at this point. Okay. One one fast, easy, quick battle. 
fast, easy, quick. I think I said the same word twice, but one easy, quick battle after the long, long helicopter loss, so we can do one more. But yeah, I think it's pretty evident on, on the from this video. I'm not even trying to force the Afi to speak now at the end. I mean if we can if we can whip him out in the last battle, I I will definitely do it. But yeah, Afidus sucks, you know. The buff doesn't help him in PvP. The um, nuke abilities are in the wrong form. You can't use it against lockout. He's not tanky, you know. He doesn't offer anything special. The damage, if you feel the conditions, is kind of good on the nuke. But the conditions are very hard to feel and he's not tanky, so... He just doesn't provide provide any, enough to be used in PvP. I'm sure he's gonna be great in Hydra, but who cares about that? There's 200 other champions that are good on Hydra too, so it doesn't matter. And in the end of the day, Tranda is 200 million times better than anything else on Hydra, so it's not that big deal. And again we got Harima in the enemy team, so Afidos will not be good matchup against that in the first place. Not only does the passive counter Afidos, but we're also against the strong affinity. So there's no way I can pick Afidos in this battle. Let's go with more than Necrot. And I could still decide between Rotos and Gallows. Maybe I'll go with Gallows if he goes with UDK or something like that. But definitely not Aphidius. Fuck that. Oh, he went with Rotos. Uh. That's not too good for us, honestly, but maybe we can do it. If we get the defense down, the Kalleos can do double hit on Rotos, but he can cleanse it, he has immunity buffs, it's kind of hard to fulfill, 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 fulfill those conditions, and Rotos can remove the defense buff with the mastery too. Since he's very low HP and likely to proc it. So I think I think Rotos might be bigger issue in this battle than Harimo. But, but not bigger issue, but he's gonna do more damage, of course. He's gonna be the one that kills us, but Harimo is gonna stall the battle and enable Rotos. Necrot isn't really gonna slow down Rotos at all. Okay, no, no polymorph. That's a decent start, but you know, as you could see, See if he got rid of the decreased defense and he got extra turn, so... And he's almost back to full health. But, also our decreased defense is not on cooldown. We got it back from killing Harima. That's the passive on Galleos. If we kill anybody with decreased defense up on them on the second form, we're gonna reset the cooldown on that skill, so we can basically spam the nukes. But 
Rotos is also gonna get extra turns and he's hardly lo losing any health at all from all the heals that he gets. Wait, can we... which one do I want to kill? Can Roto solo us? That's the final question. Okay. I think we're good. Unless he goes for like a massive extra turn strike here, we're good. Okay, so there you go. That's the conclusion of this video. Athidos. Couldn't get a single win with that crap, but because of the conditions and not being tanky and so on. But we could actually find some neat nice situations where Galleus was useful and was actually. able to deal with my biggest counter, Harima. So I think we're gonna strip Afidus of his gear, maybe put some kind of crappy gear for Hydra, and maybe Candy deserves the new gear more. I'm kind of, you know, I don't have a good attack nuker outside of Rotos. I'm kind of, you know, on a weird situation. Wukong is good, but I'm already fighting Harima in every single battle ever and it doesn't make any sense to put him in new gear unless I pull Harima and if I do pull Harima then I would do it but um, can't use Wukong then what other attack nukers do we even have left like Senna that is not good enough for this meta like as you can see she has like some crappy Hydra gear but I have even removed that from her I'll use her on Hydra but I need to put some items back, but Xena, it's not good enough for this meta anymore. The mythics are just too good and she's not tanky in the first place, but everybody's in stone skin and even if they are not, she doesn't have enough damage to one shot them. It kind of worked out decently at one time when we didn't have like Galatir and Grixia and it was mostly, you know, Tanky, tanky teams with Taras and Sifi, and maybe I could pick UDK and Necret with Xena or ban the Taras. Maybe that way she could nuke the enemy team and survive long enough. And outside of that, what do we have? Like Ronda. Ronda is meant for speed teams. She's horrible picking go second teams. On speed team, she can still occasionally be kind of useful, but she's quizzy. She doesn't have like insane AoE nook. She does have very good A2, which counters go second teams. It's not that useful against speed teams because what do I do? I'm getting locked out anyway, and even if I can kill one of their revivers, it's just gonna get healed back back up and they're gonna take multiple turns before my Ronda takes the second turn, so. It's not good enough. I feel like Candy is the best choice I have right now. Right now, at least he's a little bit tanky and does decent damage and is kind of self-reliant with Adak, Pass and Wales. And that's pretty much it, you know. I could certainly use another really strong Adak Nuker. We already have Galleos and Nice, um, I mean Narsus, and I guess Rodos is technically both attack and HP Nuker too. So we have good things on those styles and we're getting Marios probably today or in the next couple days so I'm gonna even have two good defense Nukers. Really good to use some kind of attack Nuker at this point. My attack gear is kind of getting wasted and there is nobody to put it on but who knows what happens maybe Maybe I get a secret pull in the future or something like that. Anyway, that's the conclusion of the video. Hive Lord is gonna get um, stripped. Uh, actually, 
let's do it on the video. Let's give him the uh, walk of shame. Very scandy. Yeah, Candy is gonna take the gear from the um, Afidus pack, and that's where we're gonna end the video. I'll use it in Hydra, but probably never again in PvP. That's it. See ya.